Good evening. Tonight, a jobs boost for the West Midlands with news that over 15,000 jobs could be created in Birmingham linked to the new High Speed 2 rail line. The company building the line has announced plans to move from London to a new base in Birmingham. HS2 Limited will create 1,500 jobs, including engineers and designers responsible for the track, signalling and stations. A regeneration company will also be created to develop the land around the city's Curzon Street station, which will be the Birmingham hub for the first phase of HS2. Now that could deliver 14,000 jobs and was described by a Birmingham business leader as a catalyst for growth. Here's our business correspondent, Peter Plisner. Birmingham's run-down east side, a wasteland that's badly in need of regeneration. And this is what it could look like if the HS2 station that's planned for the Curzon Street area gets the go-ahead. And this is the new urban regeneration company that's been formed to make it all happen, bringing together a variety of different organisations, including the local enterprise partnership. What this is, is the means by which we will make the most out of the station arriving. Uh, we know the train is coming now, we're pretty certain we've got a number of years to actually maximise the number of jobs that it delivers. Regeneration of parts of Birmingham's east side is pretty impressive, but it all seems to stop at this line. This wasteland here is where the HS2 station could be. Beyond that is Digbeth, a run-down area of Birmingham. The job of regenerating that and other parts of the east side now falls to this new regeneration company. It's claimed that a further regeneration will create 14,000 new jobs, although City Council leader Sir Albert Bohr admits some won't actually be new because they'll be relocating from elsewhere. Some of them will be a relocation, but uh, HS2 is going to give rise to new jobs. Let's be clear about that. There is a new industry here uh, that isn't around at the present moment. Today also saw confirmation that this Birmingham office block will house the HS2 Construction HQ, which is moving from London to the city next year. It means a further 1,500 new jobs and there's a pledge to recruit most of them locally. A lot of the jobs will come from here, some will transfer, but the vast majority of the 1,500 staff that will be based out of Birmingham will be recruited from here. But the creation of most of the jobs relies on the HS2 project going ahead. I put it to Transport Secretary Patrick McLaughlin that that's still far from certain. Well, it will happen. When it was debated in the House of Commons, 450 MPs voted for it, uh, 50 MPs voted against it. So basically it was a, an overwhelming endorsement of, of HS2. And that, according to those involved, means that in a little over a decade, this patch of derelict land will become Britain's biggest HS2 station. Peter Plisner, BBC Midlands Today, in Birmingham's east side. So, can the regeneration company deliver on today's promises? Well, back in 2004, a similar scheme was launched in Walsall to hopefully provide a multi-million pound boost for the town's economy. Ten years on, what's the reality? Ben Godfrey has been finding out. An American magazine once labelled it as Ceausescu's Romania with fast food outlets. This was Walsall 15 years ago, a town struggling to attract investment. How things have changed. It's recently been named as one of the best small towns in Europe to do business in. Some say it's thanks to Warsaw Regeneration Company, which by attracting public and private cash, kick-started the construction of a new manor hospital, Warsaw College, and large-scale supermarkets. The key has been pragmatism and actually working with the private sector. The Warsaw Regeneration Company, 10 years ago, opened a lot of doors and put Warsaw in places where local authorities and the public sector wouldn't have put us. But this is a cautionary tale. Despite attracting £400 million of investment, it was forced to close four years ago when a main funding source, Advantage West Midlands, was axed. Projects like the Warsaw Gigaport lost impetus. There was supposed to be a corridor of businesses here, all using fibre optic broadband. There was supposed to be an £80 million data hub here, but as you can see, it hasn't been fully realised. The public sector blamed the global recession and the private sector... Regeneration mustn't be dictated by the electoral cycle, but must be dictated by what business needs for the next, not five years, but for the next 10, 15 years. And it shouldn't be dictated by four-year election cycles. When Warsaw Regeneration Company closed, it was the council that became fully responsible for inward investment. We ca carried on pushing through those doors to put Warsaw on the map and to c continue putting Warsaw on the map. 
and Warsaw's map will soon see the HQ of an international pharmaceutical company and a sprawling cinema complex. Yet, nearby, we found many small shops just struggling to survive. Investment is welcomed here, but it's clearly not for everyone. Ben Godfrey, BBC Midlands Today, Warsaw. Well, for four years, Clive Dutton was Birmingham's Director of Planning and Regeneration. He left the city in 2009 to help regenerate the Olympic host borough Newham in East London. Earlier, I asked him for his verdict on the plans announced in Birmingham today. What is essential, I think, in terms of establishing a company like that is that you need, um, you need four things. You need money, you need powers, you need a very effective team that can is concentrated and dedicated to delivery and the fourth important element is flair. That's quite difficult to quantify isn't it flair? Yeah but you've got to have it otherwise um, the extraordinary opportunity for this part of the country and for Birmingham and for Brummies is, is that it, it is effective and it delivers really significant ad added value and that it isn't a, just a transport project. I think the other thing about the announcement today, it isn't a, a transport project. It is, this is defining it really as an economic regeneration project. And that means jobs, jobs, jobs. And that is the, one of the hardest things to, to deliver, but it's a really the, the most crucial thing to do for Birmingham people and people who, who live in, um, in the West Midlands. So where could this go wrong, do you think? Um, I think... Um, don't talk in those terms. It can only be right. <laughs> but it's there, so must, there are always pitfalls, no. are there? The potential pitfalls with any kind of project. Presumably, you would look at this and say, ah, this is where the potential pitfalls lie. What would those be? I think the pitfalls would be, at the outset, you, it, you've got to set this thing up really, really quickly now. You've got to get the right people there. I think you've got to concentrate on delivery. Um, you've got to have a, 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 a plan to give certainty. Um, not just the people of Birmingham, but also the other investment that you would want to see in there. And I, I also think it is um, it, it's really, really Im important that the project is actually focused on and involving people who will walk through walls for Birmingham here to, to achieve that. I mean, I could give examples, for example, of the Olympics and the Olympic Park. Um, which the primary regeneration purpose was to regenerate East London. Now, when it came to construction jobs and those, there were an awful lot that actually didn't go to local people. They went from people from all over, including internationally. And I think that the big, one of the big, biggest pitfalls in terms of that job creation there, and particularly in the early stages and those, those guarantees of the construction HQ for the whole project being in Birmingham, which is brilliant, is to make sure, you have to make sure that Brummies get those jobs. And that was Clive Dutton speaking to me a little earlier. Now you're watching Midlands Today. Good to have you with us this evening. Coming up later in the programme...